Okay. All right, do you wanna share your screen, Andre? Sure. Okay. Right. Ah, yeah, there we go. All right, our seminar speaker today is uh, Andre Andonisco, who's coming virtually from uh, yeah, the Max Planck Institute. Um, and he's going to talk to us today about uh, minimal SU6 gauge Higgs grand unification. Uh, so take it away. Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much, Matthew, for, for inviting me for this uh, seminar. Uh, today I'll try to uh, show you, as the title says, a way to unify gauge interactions together with the breaking sector by going to uh, and five to essentially to an extra dimensional model where you a model where you are in five dimensions and uh, in a few words the basic idea is that since you're in five dimensions a gauge field would have will have five components the first four of them you are the usual uh, the usual gauge bosons we see in in real life so to speak whereas the fifth one is just behaves like a scalar from for, from a 4D point of view so. With this idea, you can play around and, and uh, unify gauge interactions together with the Higgs. Uh, <clears throat> okay, right. So uh, a few words about why we're looking at uh, these kind of models. I mean, you, for example, uh, you know that the standard models, the standard model suffers from from uh, a couple of hierarchy problems at least that, I, uh, that, that are directly related to what I'm going to present. First, the first one is the, the gauge hierarchy problem, which basically says that um, the, Higgs, uh, the Higgs mass is very sensitive to, 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 the, to the new new physics scale. And uh, basically what, what happens is that if we have some, some heavy new physics at, at, the, at the high scale capital M, at one loop, this uh, this heavy this heavy scale will feed into the Higgs mass, and then in order to uh, reproduce the observed Higgs mass, which is uh, would be much lower than the than this high scale, you need a very fine cancellation between these two contributions, right? And that, from a, from a theoretical point of view, is 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 something undesirable. And the other hierarchy problem of the sun model is the, the so-called flavor hierarchy problem, right? Which basically asks the question, why, why do we have the, all the standard model fermions standing? Uh, I mean, why, why do their masses stand six order of magnitude? That's, that's, that's a pretty large hierarchy and uh, it would be nice to have an explanation for them. Also, if we include neutrinos, it gets, it gets even worse. And, uh, What's nice is that we have one framework that could solve both of these problems, and that would be what extra dimensions, which are also known as random standard models. Of course, this is not the only solution to these problems, but this is a classic solution to these problems. Also, the standard model, besides these problems, has some has some opinion. I mean, besides experimental uh, experimental confirmation, uh, it has some some theoretical. Uh, a theoretically appealing properties such as gauge coupling unification. You know that if you run the gauge couplings all the way up to, to this scale, which is 10 to 15, 10 to 15 GeV, they, they meet, all right? One might speculate that the fundamental interactions unify in a grand unified theory. However, this comes also comes with, uh, with uh, some hierarchy problems of its own. It's, this is what is called, what is known as a double triplet uh, splitting problem because uh, for example, if you are if your if your interactions here unify in SU5, your Higgs is going to have an SU5 partner, and this SU5 partner has to be very very heavy in order to suppress proton decay. And at the same time, you have to somehow engineer a separation between these huge scales and the total GV and the Higgs scale. And this uh, this is also a fine tuning problem. It's in some sense a three level hierarchy problem. And what is nice about gauge Higgs grand unification theory I mentioned earlier is that we can have grand unified theories while avoiding this uh, this uh, this uh, three level hierarchy problem, and while also explaining the points uh, I I, I uh, presented on the previous slide, problems I presented presented on the previous slide. So to say it again, 
So the, the 5D gauge field has a 4D component, which we're familiar with, and a fifth component. And the idea is to embed the gauge, uh, the thermal gauge bosons into A mu and the Higgs into A5 in some way, which I'll come to later. So yeah, this was a short introduction of my talk. And my plan is to slowly walk you through all the way to gauge, uh, gauge Higgs grand unified theories and present my, the, the, the model we wrote, uh, this GH got model we wrote. And to get there, I'll try to start, I'll start from, from giving a short introduction to extra dimension. Then tune it up one step and talk about gauge Higgs unification, which is, uh, basically, the aim of such theories is to embed the electric interactions together with the Higgs in the same 5D gauge field. And well, then I'll present uh, my work and related work here. And finally, I will conclude. So let's start with some extra dimensional ideas. And I think the main idea of extra dimensions is the, is the so called Kaluza Kleine composition. So, to, to just to, to, to see how this works, works, we'll just choose a simple example, right, where you have a scalar in a flat D, uh, in, a, in a flat 5D space time, right? So, of course, because the, we don't, we only see only four dimensions, the extra dimension has to be finite and microscopic. So I, in my case, it's going to be an interval. So, right, you, you write down the Lagrangian for that. And when you vary the action, you get, uh, you get some term that gives you, uh, with the equations of motion and some a boundary term because your extra dimension is is finite and I'll come back to this term on the on the on the on the next slide. So, in order to deal with this this uh, this Lagrangian, one uh, does the so-called kaluza klein decomposition, which is uh, nothing else than so some sort of separation of variables where you write down your five D field as an infinite uh, sum over four D fields. And each of them carrying uh, uh, y dependent, which is which is called usually called the profile along it's called the profile or the wave function. And it describes how 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 um, each field is localized along, along the extra dimension. And well, you can uh, one can uh, write down the equations of motion for for these pro these profile. And in flat in flat space, they're pretty simple, right? They they just sines and cosines. And uh, yeah, they're also no normalized. These wave functions are also normalized by virtue of uh, wanting to have canonical kinetic terms in, in my 4D field. So yeah, the, the main point is that the 5D field here is like an infinite tower of a, a 4D field. And another ingredient is uh, related to the, the, I mean, you have, it's related to this boundary term. In order for your action variation to vanish, you also have to, you also have to make that boundary term vanish. And uh, it turns out that you can do this with two types of boundary conditions, either Dirichlet or Neumann, and apply it on both ends of the extra dimension, zero and L. And basically Dirichlet is, uh, is this one or this one, and I'll denote it with the minus. And Neumann is the opposite one where the derivative has to cancel. And I'll denote it with a plus. And the, the nice feature of, a, of this boundary condition is that if, for example, if you apply plus plus boundary conditions to one of your 5D scalars, you, uh, you get a massless mode. I mean, in this, this first mode in the Kaluza Klein decomposition, this first, uh, this first scalar field for the scalar field is going to be massless. So that's. Uh, that's an interesting. Uh, that's an interesting uh, model. That's going to be useful for model building later. On the other hand, if you have minus minus or plus minus minus plus or mixed boundary conditions, you don't get any massless modes for for uh, for your field. And for for computing uh, couplings, the idea is, is very simple. You you have write down your four D four D Lagrangian. You plug in your Kaluza Klein decomposition for each uh, of the fields. And then the couplings are not, they're just gonna be overlap integrals evaluated in the extra dimension. Here I have four scalars, so I have four, four, four weight functions. Uh, okay. For fermions in 5D, uh, things get a bit more complicated because in 5D you have no chiral fermions. So that's, that's would be catastrophic because we observe uh, chiral fermions in 5D. However, this, uh, 
this can be bypassed through boundary through, through boundary conditions or let's say to the fact that we, we work on this interval uh, so if you do the calusa client decomposition for a fermion for the left-handed and right-handed component uh, you see that the profiles of the two uh, components have are, have coupled equations so they are somehow correlated to each other and the nice thing is that once you choose, for example, plus plus boundary conditions or Neumann for the left-handed part, the right-handed part is going to automatically have minus minus boundary conditions. And these minus minus boundary conditions would kill the zero mode of this uh, the, uh, the zero mode of this right-handed 5D fermion. So what is nice is that through boundary conditions, one can obtain a current zero mode for fermion. So, this is again, this is good for, for model building. Uh, so as I said, yeah, these, these kind of boundary conditions produce plus plus or minus minus boundary conditions that produce a chiral zero mode. And the mixed boundary conditions for, uh, for fermions would produce no zero mode. And in each cases, uh, you would have an infinite tower of the so a Klein tower of vector-like uh, vector -like fermions. And this is, uh, this is explained schematically in this picture here, for example. So here on the, on the left side, I, I, this, is, this is basically the Kaluza Klein tower of a, of a fermion, uh, which has plus plus boundary conditions for its uh, left-handed part, right? So what you end up is with is the zero mode, which is left-handed, whereas the right-handed zero mode gets killed by boundary conditions. And then you have an infinite tower of, of uh, vector-like uh, fermions. And here is the same story, but with the with, uh, plus plus boundary conditions for the right handed uh, fermion. So that leads uh, at low energy to a massless right handed fermion or deep right handed fermion. And also a similar picture applies for, for gauge, 5D gauge bosons with uh, A mu on one column, so to speak, and A5 A on the other. As in, for example, if you put, if you assign plus plus boundary conditions for a mu, besides the infinite tower of spin one field, which you will always get, you get the massless gauge boson. So that's that's useful for introducing the photon or the gluon, you know, the massless, the massless gauge bosons of the Turner model. But if you assign minus minus boundary conditions for a mu, you get at low energy a massless sky scalar zero mode. That's can, can, that will also be helpful later because in this way we can we can embed a Higgs. And with mixed boundary conditions, uh, you get you get uh, you get no massless fields. Also, also desirable if you have some five uh, D degrees of freedom near theory that you don't want to have any light for uh, the counterpart. Okay, so what I said here applies to flat extra uh, was in the context that in the context of flat extra dimensions, but the idea like the main ideas to the kind of composition and boundary conditions, they apply equally uh, to, to the work extra dimensions. And okay, this and the same, you have the same prediction for, for, for massless for the massless zero modes. So uh, now I'm going to go to the swart. Uh, to the to the warp uh, extra dimensions, and the this was originally proposed to in, in 99 by Randall and Sundrum to to explain the, the gauge hierarchy problem why why the Higgs is so much lighter than say the Planck scale, and the setup is also extra dimensional where you have uh, you have this extra dimension going from zero to L, and you have Two fixed points at the end uh, at the end of the extra dimension. So these are like 4D manifolds, which are also known as brain. Uh, the one the one uh, on the right here at L is usually called out referred to it mostly as the infrared brain, and the other one is the uh, uh, ultraviolet brain. And between the two brains is what one calls the the box. And the idea here is to have this metric in 5D. It's called the, it's the so-called warp metric, right? Where you have this exponential in front of each 4D slice. And Y, Y is the coordinate uh, along the extra dimension. And K is the curvature scale, which is usually, which is expected to be of, of the Planck scale due to naturalness argument. And uh, with a pretty mild, tuning between the, the curvature scale and L, which is the length of the extra dimension, you get 
uh, you can define, I mean, what comes out is a quantity, which is uh, exponentially warped down from the Planck scale, which is the natural value of k, all the way to the 1 to 10 TeV scale. So basically, that's the, that's the idea of solving the, the hierarchy problem. So if, if you have an energy scale here on the Planck frame, and it's, it takes a natural value of, 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 uh, of uh, M Planck, it'll be uh, redshifted all the way to the TeV scale by the virtue of this, of this quark uh, metric. Right, and this scale, which was going to be frequently, it's going to frequently appear in this talk, I'm just going to denote it as the uh, MKK, the Kaluza client scale. Um, so this is, I mean, here I'm just, uh, I'm just uh, flashing, uh, showing you in a bit of detail how the how the hierarchy problem is solved in in RX model. So this is something you can fit into a slide. Basically, you just uh, you just take the uh, the Higgs to be here, go to the TeV scale, where the where the the typical energy scale is much lower than the Planck scale, and by just writing down the Lagrangian. Including correctly the accounting correctly for the metric, you see that if you start uh, with a Higgs mass, uh, the, the Higgs there of the order of the Planck scale, you end up with it to be exponentially warped. So this is uh, this is how basically how you generate this uh, this uh, huge hierarchy between between the Richter scale and the Planck scale. And at the same time, without going too much into details. Uh, from a 4D point of view, the the, the scale of gravitation does not get redshifted. It stays it stays the same. So that's uh, that's that's a nice picture. It's, it's, uh, gravity remains weak, even though we have this uh, swarping mechanism. Uh, so what about the kind of, the kind of fields you can how how do fermionic fields start to behave in in uh, in 5D warp space? And I think the, the the main ingredient here is to uh, would be the, the the effect of a port of a five d watt space mass for a, for a fermion. Uh, so if you if you just write down the Lagrangian for a fermion for a five d fermion like this, Dirac by the way, as I mentioned earlier, because you cannot have chiral fermions in five d, and you take plus plus boundary conditions. Uh, what you get is a uh, zero mode, even though you have uh, a 5D mass plus a tower of Kaluza Klein mode. And uh, this, this mass here, which by the way, I wrote it as, uh, I gave it this natural value of order K times the order one parameter, which is usually defined by C. So this 5D mass here is gonna show up in the wave function or in the profile of the, of the chiral zero mode, like this. And it's gonna, like, exponent, it's gonna depend exponentially on this, on this mass. And what is nice is that this, uh, this 5D mass has somehow uh, unexpected or let's say non-trivial effect on, on, on 4D physics. It's just, uh, it, it, sets, it sets the localization of the zero mode, uh, uh, the chiral zero mode in the box so in the extra dimension. And uh, it's, it somehow looks like this. So, if uh, these I'm here, I'm just plotting uh, fermion zero mode wave functions or profiles as a function of, of the coordinates of the extra dimension. So for example, if I take a C of 0 0.2, I get something, I get the fermion which is localized very close to the IR brain. And if I take C equal to 0, 0 0.6, the, the fermion gets localized close to the UV brain. So basically that's, that's, uh, that's a very appealing feature because uh, in order to solve the hierarchy problem, your Higgs should be around here, around the localized close to the infrared brain. So with this small variation, order one variation in the in the C parameter, you can localize the fermion away or closer to the Higgs field. And since the Yukawas are given by overlap and by the overlap integrals of fermion profiles with with the with the higher localized Higgs, this uh, this uh, Offers a geometrical explanation to the hierarchy problem, to the flavor hierarchy problem, which is one of the nice features I mentioned in the beginning of our extra dimension. And this is this is just because it, it boils down to the to the uh, Yukawa depending exponential, um, the Yukawa depend, having an exponential dependence on C. So basically, instead of having ten uh, six orders of magnitude in the flavor hierarchy, 
you, you, you can, re, uh, in, in the standard model here, we can just reproduce them with order one dimensions uh, parameters. Uh, concerning the, the, the gauge, the gauge, uh, gauge field in 5D space, this, uh, the, 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 their, their profiles use, uh, you, you look like this. So here, um, I, I'm showing the, the profile for, for the gauge zero mode. Uh, one interesting, I mean, the first, the first thing to notice here is that uh, the, the gone and the photon, the, the unbroken, the gauge symmetries that are unbroken at low energy, they have, the, these gauge bosons have a flat wave function. So that will translate into, into uh, universal, flavor universality because uh, you know that each wave function is, is uh, orthonormalized, as I mentioned earlier. So when you compute the overlap between, let's say, the gluon and two fermions, uh, the overlap integral, the, the, the profile of, of, of the gluon will factor out because it's flat, it's a constant, and then you're just left with an orthonormal, uh, with an integral overall orthonormal uh, wave function. So that's, uh, that's, that's a very nice feature. On the other hand, for the W and Z, things change a little bit because of electric symmetry breaking. Their, their wave functions change a little bit here in the in the infrared, and that uh, that can lead to to, to some to some uh, non universality. And finally, this is how uh, an A five would look like. So the fifth component of a gauge field, its, it's wave function is going to be a very infrared localized, which is something desirable because in order, to, as I said earlier, in order to solve the hierarchy problem, the gauge hierarchy problem, your Higgs should be uh, localized towards the, the infrared brain. And here I'm also showing some, some uh, the, the wave functions of the first uh, KK modes of uh, gauge boson or 5D gauge bosons for the different boundary conditions. Uh, the main feature here is that with the exception of plus minus uh, gauge bosons, which are a bit curious, all the Kaluza Klein profiles uh, are peaked towards the, towards the infrared brain which is the same also holds true for fermions. And towards, uh, towards the UV brain, they become constant. The minus plus and minus minus, they actually go to zero, which is as expected because the minus means they, they should, uh, their profiles should vanish on the UV brain. Whereas the plus plus still has a small overlap here with the, with the, with the UV brain. And the masses you predict for these guys are actually of order MKK. This is uh, uh, exponentially warped down scale that I, that I, that I uh, mentioned uh, earlier. Okay, so with these uh, armed with these uh, concepts, I think we can we can uh, tackle the the idea of gauge unification. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, it's just uh, the, the main idea that you embed Higgs in uh, in the fifth component of the of the gauge uh, of the gauge field, and because of uh, gauge symmetry. Uh, you do not generate the Higgs potential at three levels, so that that helps with naturalness. It's uh, uh, I don't know, maybe you're more familiar with SUSY, right? Where you embed the Higgs together with the fermion and then the, the, for the Carl, uh, the Higgs in, somehow inherits the Carl uh, symmetry from, from the fermion, from its super partner. So that's also uh, a way of solving the hierarchy problem. So here, this is pretty much uh, the same, but instead of spin zero and spin one half, you have spin zero and spin one and it's gauge symmetry protecting the, the Higgs mass. And the setup is that is as follows, as depicted here. I mean, you have you have a gauge uh, a gauge group a G in the bulk, and through boundary conditions, you break it on well, H zero a group called H zero on the UV brain, and another group called H one on the on the IR brain. And uh, it, what happens when you do this? It's that at low energies, you have a group H that survives, uh, and because of, uh, I mean, if you remember, I, I mentioned I mentioned earlier that if you have if you have minus minus boundary conditions for for your A mu for your uh, for the uh, gauge field, then you get a light, you might get a massless killer mode. So that's uh, that's the idea here. That basically the, the Higgs is going to be embedded in this uh, intersection of cosets here, G over H zero and G over over H one, and what survives at low energy is the intersection of the two groups on the, uh, the two symmetry groups on the on the brain. And uh, to, to better explain this idea, 
I think it's most it's most instructive to take the, the simplest uh, the simplest possible uh, example. And uh, the idea here is uh, to to embed to just unify an engage group, to unify an five engage group, to unify the electronic gauge bosons and the data. And you can do that minimally if you have SU3 in the bulk, which you break through boundary conditions on the left to the electronic gauge group on the on the two brains. And uh, the Higgs lives in the coset of these two groups. And the, the dimension of this coset, coset is exactly four, so that you have four real degrees of freedom, which coincides with the Higgs. And uh, this also can be seen, can be understood if you look at the branching ratio of the of the SC3 adjoint to SC2 to the SC2 cross U1. Uh, and it, you can see that that uh, here you can in the, in the adjoint of SC3 you can fit perfectly the the standard molecule, the electronic gauge bosons, and and the Higgs. Uh, before I continue, I just wanted to mention that this uh, this model is unrealistic uh, as as it is because it predicts a wrong a wrong uh, theta Weinberg angle. Uh, but you can easily bypass that by by enlarging the group to SU three cross some extra U one such that hypercharge is a, is a, is a linear combination of two U one, so you can choose. Basically, the, the Weinberg, Weinberg angle becomes a free parameter in that case. And also, a nice, a nice way to visualize these uh, boundary conditions is to, to write down uh, the, 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 full, the full gauge field like this. So basically, here, though, you can see that the plus pluses here correspond to the four, to the four uh, standard model gauge field, so the electroweak gauge field, actually, in the, in the boundary conditions of MU. And the boundary conditions of A5, which are just obtained by flipping the boundary conditions of AMU, you have you can see that the Higgs lives here in this in this cosine. So that, that's a nice uh, pictorial representation of all this. Uh, now one has to also worry about uh, how to embed the fermions in such a in such a in such, a, such a setup. And minimally one can uh, one can uh, use uh, the, the the triplet, the fundamental of, of, of SU3. Uh, which is not, let me mention, this is the SC3 bulk, it's not the SC3 color. And uh, the second one would be a, a six of SC3 bulk, right? And the branching, the branching rules are, are like here. And just so you know, here I'm, uh, here I'm also writing the, the SC3 representations of the fermions that come out. Right, so if you, uh, if you assign these boundary conditions to the left-handed uh, parts of these two bulk fermions, you see that you end up, you can end up with uh, with uh, the, the 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 desired zero modes here. We're just looking at third generation as thermal quark. So here in the six, you can you can have the you can have the left-handed um, quark tablet as a zero mode of this 5D fermion, and uh, you can have the top the top right as a zero mode of this one. And here you can embed the the the, the right-handed down quark, the bottom right. Uh, however, there's there's a problem here because when you want to write when you write down the interactions of these fermions with the Higgs, you have to write them as a 5D uh, covariant derivative because remember A5 is part of the 5D gauge field, and you you have you end up with a phenomenological problem is that you don't you have the Higgs connecting these two. So that assure, assures that the top gets uh, gets the mass electric symmetry breaking, which is what we observe. But the the Higgs fails to connect these two. These uh, I mean the the the, the quark doublet with the down with the down part with the right handed down part because they are part of separate multiplets. And uh, in order to deal with that, one has to one has this uh, this. Uh, and the magical trick, so to say, that uh, one can use is that to add uh, brain masses, right? It's that you just you 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 it's, uh, you, you fix uh, you fix you add this master involving 5D fields on one of the brains. See here, for example, I'm in the infrared brain, and with this, you want to connect these two quark doublets across different multiplets, and when you do that, uh, automatically. Uh, as D talks down to Q prime, and Q prime talks to uh, through the Higgs, and Q prime talks to Q through this brain mass, you get Q to talk to, to D. 
So that's that's uh, how you generate the down um, bottom mass in this case. And this is all just to say that uh, in these kind of models, these brain masses are are uh, are a necessary ingredient to to obtain you know, neuroelectric spectrum at lower energies for fermions. Uh, right. But there's also this this multiplet here that I did not did not did not mention. Uh, right. So I'm a something I, I I have to mention before going on is that I'm assigning here uh, mixed boundary conditions to the two multiplets because I don't want them to produce any zero modes, which is what happens. I mean, which which uh, which is taken care of by by plus minus boundary or minus plus boundary condition. So I have to assign them. Uh, mixed boundary conditions to kill their zero. But uh, still, they can pose problems because if you look at the at the first, uh, even though they have their zero mode, you can look at the first kaluza klein uh, mode of these minus plus fermions. And their mass depends, uh, the, the, their mass depends like this on C. Their mass normalized to the KK scale has this uh, dependence on C. So, the problem is that for for uh, certain values of C, which is our is the bulk mass parameter, these uh, exotics become very very light. I mean, their first KK mode become very light, exponentially even exponentially suppressed in this case. And also, that's uh, that's uh, uh, let's say a phenomenological hurdle when building these kind of models because you have you have uh, when you embed the standard model fermion, you have to embed them in some larger uh, multiplet of the bulk gauge group, and inevitably you're going to end up with uh, fermions having minus plus and plus minus boundary conditions. And because everything is connected in some sense, uh, I mean, the, because these uh, these uh, this multiplet, these three standard model multiplets will have the same uh, mass parameter or bulk mass parameter. One has to, I mean, one one is very constrained because that's one. At, on the one hand, you want to reproduce the fermion masses of standard model, and at the sex, and at the same time, you don't want to have these uh, light exotics which have not been observed at at UHC, for example. So that's 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 a problem of these models, and especially in uh, gauge Higgs grand unified theory, because there you have you have a larger gauge group, you have more. Uh, exotic fermions to which you have to assign uh, mixed boundary conditions, and then your C's are constrained. The, the C parameters, the bulk mass parameters, are constrained, and then uh, one has to be. I mean, one has to. There's many constraints. Let's let's put it that way, and not not much space to breathe. Uh, and finally, before I move to gauge Higgs grand unified theories, a few words about the, the Higgs potential. So, uh, as I mentioned earlier, it's, uh, the Higgs potential is generated at one loop through the through the Hossatani mechanism, and that uh, this this potential is is uh, one one way to see why this potential is forbidden at three level is that to notice that uh, A five only appears through the the five dimensional uh, F mu nu. Well, FN and FMN in this case, and it always appears with derivative. So you have it, it has a shift symmetry, but this shift symmetry is broken by by Yukawa's and and its coupling to to, to gauge boson. So that's how you generate uh, a mass for the Higgs at one loop. And in some sense, you can see you can see this as a pseudo number Goldman boson arising from the this, this breaking of SU three. To, to the to the electronic uh, gauge group and well this is this is something uh, which is well established uh, through the ads cfd uh, duality but i'm not going to discuss too much about that and if uh, it is instructive to look how a typical contribution of a species which i denote by r is uh, contributes to the to the higgs potential so basically this is this is how how your your effective potential looks like it's uh, it's just an integral over all momentum scale, and uh, you have the log here of of, of, uh, of a form factor which depends on p squared times uh, a sinus squared whose argument depends on the on the Higgs web phase two, and uh, this is easy to understand if uh, one makes the connection here. Is this this uh, f here? Is something like a decay constant, so you can you can you can immediately make an analogy with QCD. It's kind of like a, a like a it's like the pan decay constant. You know that in QCD the pan is much 
lighter than, for example, the road. And uh, this is uh, this is the same mechanism is at work here when you look at these these models. Uh, and here I'm also I'm also plotting this uh, this uh, uh, form factor as a function of momentum multiplied by by p three. Basically, here, well, if one the integral over p of this curve it would give you the the mass term for the Higgs in this potential. So also this is this is instructive to look at this. it is instructive to look at this plot because one sees that uh, basically one sees how the hierarchy problem is solved. You don't have any more sensitivity to, to the UV. All the contribution comes from 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 more uh, momenta of the order of MKK. So this is like the the Kaluza Klein scale. So this is uh, this is a nice feature. I solve the hierarchy problem. Okay. So now going again one step further to gauge Higgs grand unified theory, where the uh, idea is exactly the same as uh, in gauge Higgs, as in simple gauge Higgs unification. But now the, your, your bulk gauge group has to include also uh, a grand unified, uh, has to in, include the grand as a subgroup, a grand unified group such as SO5, SU5 or SO10. And uh, even more than that, because you also have to somehow fit the Higgs in this uh, in this in this large in this large group, and uh, the the nice feature of the nice features of these models are that well you achieve some uh, unification between the gauge interactions and the electric signature breaking, which is which is theoretically very appealing. You can also leverage the WAP geometry to explain uh, hierarchies here, like the such as the, you know, such as the gauge and the flavor hierarchy. As I mentioned uh, in the in the introduction, you don't have any double triplet splitting problem in this in this uh, in this model just because the SU5 part of the, of the Higgs is going to be also kind of light as we're going to see. And maybe perhaps most strikingly, uh, in such models, proton decay is forbidden at all orders in perturbation theory. So this is something completely new and completely different from from ordinary uh, 4D guts. And I'll come back to that. I'll come back to that later. Uh, of course, I mean this is not the this gauge Higgs grand unified theory is not a new idea. I mean there's been many attempts uh, to build such models, for example, based on on SO11 or the on the SU6 gauge group, uh, bulk gauge group, which usually is broken to SU5 on the UV brain and to some other some other uh, group on on uh, yeah, brain in such a way that the tunnel model gauge group is reproduced and at low energy, and that in such a way that the only um, Kähler or A50 mode that you have will be the ones corresponding to the Higgs. So this is what people did, but they ran into some severe phenomenological challenges. For example, they because of this. Uh, uh, because of having to having very large uh, irreducible representations of this gauge of this unified gauge group, you have lots of plus minus and minus plus fermions, and uh, the setup is simply too constrained, and this this leads to too light exotic fermions. Also, uh, they're, 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 the values they computed for it, for him and, and Higgs, I mean, the values that came out for, for the Higgs mass were uh, not quite a bit lower than what what was measured and also the, they they had uh, they had unrealistic standard model fermion spectrum and no theory of flavor whatsoever and the the solutions on the market to these problems are are just uh, i mean it, it just boils down to complicating the model, model in some sense for example one can go to 6d six dimensions or just you know introduce some more some more some more fields but our uh, approach was a bit was a bit different uh, in uh, in, uh, in our model. Instead of breaking to a larger group on, on one of the brains, we actually decided to break uh, directly to the GSM on one brain. By the way, here and just leave SU5 on the other brain. And with respect, by the way, with respect to the previous model, we also flipped the the gauge groups in the sense that we have the largest gauge group, the larger gauge group on the on the other brain. And because of 
relaxing this breaking pattern, we can avoid, we are able to avoid this, pro this problem of light exotics. And we also obtain realistic kind of model fermion masses and, and mixing. And in some sense, the price to pay, which is not really a price to pay, it's actually a, it's, it's, it's a desirable feature in some, in some, in some cases. We also, because of the larger breaking here, we, uh, we also have uh, extra scalars in our, in our theory. So this is uh, this is basically how the how we decided to assign the boundary the boundary conditions to our to our model. This is the boundary conditions for the for AMU. So uh, here, with in blue with plus plus you have you have the you have the uh, model gauge uh, gauge boson. So uh, so we, that's uh, that's of course step zero. Uh, here in in these. In this column, or in this column and line, we embedded. Uh, we will assign minus minus to a mu, which leads to 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 massless scalars at three level, massless at three level. And uh, the scalars we get by doing this are the Higgs, which is again step zero, uh, real uh, real singlet, and leptoquark, which has this uh, quantum number. So it's uh, it's uh, SU three, SU two, and SU one hypercharge here. Um, and also we get because we, we get also some some uh, uh, the you know the, the usual x and y gut gauge bosons which are basically here they they, they live in the coset of SU five over G standard model and uh, because I mean there is, of course you cannot they cannot have a zero mode so that's why we assign minus plus boundary boundary conditions to them so by just extending this. Uh, with the scalar sector, we see that there's no more any any double triplet splitting problem because S1, the, the left part, which I call S1, a conventional name for it, and Higgs, the Higgs, they are part of the same uh, SU5 multiplet and are both massless at, at, at three level. So that's that means that you don't have any more double triplet splitting here. And uh, also another interesting feature is that you get for, for these uh, minus plus uh, vector leptocards, which I call the new, like the, the X and Y gut gauge boson, you get uh, order MKK masses. So that's like order 10, 20 TV, something like that. So it's also, it's, it's, it's an interesting, it, this leads to an interesting scenario where even though we have a grand unified theory, we don't have a, we don't have a, de uh, a desert all the way up to, to 10 to the 15, GV, the, 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 gut, uh, the gut gauge bosons are, are much, much closer. Uh, the, this is the fermionic sector we, we, we uh, added in uh, the fermionic sector we, that we added in our model. And even though it looks complicated, this is really the, the, minimal, the minimal thing you can do. Um, like for, for example, uh, if you, this, for example, just to mention one one constraint is that this twenty, which is I think the three index anti-symmetric representation of SU six, this one is the only one which can the lowest representation that that can accommodate like a, a right-handed right-hand up part. And then again, we had to play this uh, the, the similar uh, similar game as before in the sense that since uh, the the different quarks are 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 living in different multiplets. They are, do not get connected with the Higgs. So then you have to add some some brain masses to connect them to each other in order to get uh, a viable. I mean, in order to, such that they can get their masses to electric symmetry symmetry break. And uh, with this minimal spectrum and the the relaxed breaking pattern I mentioned earlier, we were able to reproduce all the standard fermion masses, also neutrinos. With order one uh, C parameters, it's just I remind you these are the localization parameters of the bulk mass parameters of the fermion, and with order one anarchic uh, brain masses. Also, we had no light exotics in our in our spectrum, so basically this is uh, uh, we, we we solved all the problems that were existing previously in the in the literature. And also, what's what's nice uh, is that you know it might seem that these brain masses are a bit arbitrary, but they really aren't because here we wrote down all the possible uh, brain masses that are allowed by symmetry and and uh, and brain and uh, boundary conditions, and it turned out that uh, each of them is necessary 
the, the, the two, the, the blue ones and the red one in order to correct, uh, to get the correct uh, star model ma fermion masses and no light exotics. And this one was, uh, was necessary to get to get the, the correct electroweak uh, to reproduce, to get a correct electric symmetric breaking and to reproduce the Higgs mass. Uh, and also maybe something interesting to note about the, the fermionic sector. So this is one generation. And if you, if you sum the dimensions of the representations, you get a number which, uh, I don't know, you might've might have seen before. That's uh, a bonus, so to speak. Right, so uh, how I mentioned earlier that, that proton decay is, is, is forbidden, forbidden in, in, uh, in GH gut. And in order to see how that, how that works, I think it's most instructive to just compare what to what happens in, in 40 gut. So I'm just taking SU5 as an, uh, and as an, an example. And the main, the main point here is that one can write the Yukawa term for quarks, for example, for the up quarks here. Uh, in, using psi and psi charge conjugate. And with, with this observation, you, one can fit both uh, the uh, QLF and UR charge conjugate in the same SU5 multiplex. And if you write down the Lagrangian for this, so the kinetic term and, uh, and uh, Yukawa, which, I, uh, which, which involves the charge conjugate fermion, you get, uh, you get the right Yukawa, but you get also a uh, diquark coupling for the for this uh, for the for the uh, the colored gauge boson we've got like what I call DMU. and this exactly this, this will lead to proton decay in 4D. So that's that's basically that that forces one to have the, the gut scale very high. Uh, however, uh, the situation is a bit different in, in uh, GH gut because the Yukawas come from the covariant derivative. A5 has a gauge origin in the end, right? So you're no longer allowed, allowed to write such a cow psi bar and psi, psi, psi C. You can only write it with psi bar and psi. And that forces you to embed the, uh, the quarks in different SU5, the different quarks in different SU5 multiplets. Um, otherwise, I mean, if you would embed, if you try to embed QLF and URC in the same multiplet, uh, they would not talk to each other to the Higgs, so they would not get any mass for electric symmetry breaking. So that's that's clearly excluded. So you can embed them in different SU5 multiplets, and because of that, uh, VMU will not uh, connect them in any way because you're going to have always connections like this. So Q to this uh, to this uh, exotic quark, or U here is going to connect to, uh, to this uh, exotic quark, and similarly here. So. That's uh, that's something very nice. It's, it tells you that uh, due to gauge symmetry, basically in the end, uh, you cannot you cannot have any uh, couplings which in the end violate baryon number because in this in in, in, in GH gut baryon number is an accidental accidental symmetry. So that that means that that uh, the proton is stable at all order same perturbation theory. So to just to summarize, the idea is that uh, you do not hear it. it's impossible to generate the couplings that would the, the, the couplings of the gauge bosons or scalars that would generate proton D. So that's that's also an appealing feature of this, of this model. And uh, finally, some uh, some words on the on the phenome of this model, of the model that we, we built. Uh, I'll just start with, for example, the the the, the scalar potential here. Um, we did in order to compute. I mean, the, the masses of the, the, the scalar spectrum. We fixed MKK uh, to 10 TeV, and also at, uh, on some plots you're going to see one of our R prime instead of MKK. It's basically the same thing, just a different, uh, it's a different notation. So uh, by by fixing this and computing the Coleman Weinert potential, we found that we found correct the correct electric symmetry breaking for for a decay, Higgs decay constant of roughly, of roughly 5 TeV. And this is, this is how the potential looks like at, at, small, at small values of, of the field. And uh, how do you get here is by summing different, different contributions to, to, the, to the Higgs potential. So calculate loops from different sectors in, in, in this theory. So 
Here, for example, uh, we just took the dominant ones, which are these for the ZW top and the exotic park, which is uh, these builder guys that I mentioned earlier. And uh, also on a previous slide, I mentioned that that uh, the there was this brain mass that was actually essential for 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 having correct electric symmetry breaking, and you can see it you can see it here because uh, Again, the potential here, the sum, the potential, the Higgs potential is the, is the sum of all these four contributions, which you can, and this is sum, the total sum, you can see it here, close to the, close to the axis. And here is the top. And if you wouldn't, if one would not have the exotics, which are here, the minimum would be something, would be something around here, like D over F, let's say, of order 0 0.3, which is, which is excluded. That's, that's too low value for, for F. So, this is where the, the exotic contribution comes in handy because it, you can, as you can see, it's pretty large and it counterbalances the, the top contribution such that you end up with the minimum at low values of, of, of uh, V over F. And here you can see in this, in this plot, you can see that still there is some order, uh, some, some tuning, some fine tuning in our model because F is pretty high, MKK is pretty high with respect to the Higgs map. And the way you can, let's say, intuitively see this tuning is that you have these large four contributions, which somehow cancel to something that looks that looks pretty flat. But even though you have to fine tune once to get the the right bed, then the Higgs mass comes out in the right ballpark and without any extra tuning. And this is this is shown this is shown in this in this plot here that we have. Here I'm just. Uh, I'm plotting two branches which correspond to uh, two different values of that exotic brain mass that I was that I was uh, two two different signs sorry of that exotic brain mass I was I was mentioning. So basically, uh, you can see that once you impose that the, the, the top mass have the correct value, which is by the way here it's it's slightly lower than the usual 170 just because you evaluate with these masses at at the high scale and you have to run them down. And this is the conventional value taken. So you can see that once you have um, you fix the top mass to its correct value, and uh, you get you get uh, you get a Higgs mass which is in the in the right ballpark. Not all points in the in the green band fall also on the on the on the blue band, but some of them do. So that's uh, that's pretty nice. I mean, you produce you get you get the Higgs mass in the in the right ballpark, which is not which was not achieved in previous in previous in previous. Uh, uh, literature on the subject and also well, another nice feature is that you predict the mass of this leptoquark by just using uh, some model constants and of course times times mkk and for mkk taken to be to 10 tev uh, you get this leptoquark to have roughly a 2 tv mass and also you get this, this singlet the singlet usually gets masses below below five to 500 gb and this is Something here that this is something which is let's say different from other extra dimensional models. Usually, in ex other extra dimensional models, you you have flavor bonds that push your Kaluza Klein scale to very high values. But here, also you have bonds on the mass of the leptoquark obtained, for example, by by pair production of pair production of this leptoquark at LHC. This also pushes your KK scale uh, to considerable values. And I'll come back to this later. Uh, how, how much time do I have left, by the way? Uh, say five minutes. Five minutes. Okay. Right. So then I'll I'll have to I'll have to skim a bit faster to these uh, slides. But anyway, the main point also is it's nice that uh, you can reproduce the mixings of the of the standard model. Uh, in, uh, that is the CK mixing, and also get uh, a sensible uh, pattern for the PMNS in this in this in these models. So basically, just uh, really quickly, this relies on the fact that uh, the masses, the mass matrices of of of, uh, of various fermions depend on um, some potentially hierarchical quantities. So this is this is this these like flavor. It, it's tied to the flavor hierarchy. Basically, you have this. Flavor functions defined like that, which uh, are order one for different values of C and exponentially suppressed for other values of, of C. 
So um, one can, by looking at these mass matrices, matrices for the up and down, one can infer the approximate hierarchies in the uh, rotation matrices of U left and D, D, D left. And these are, if, if you choose these two matrices to be hierarchical, then their product, which is the TKM, is also going to be hierarchical. And by choosing these uh, ratios of F functions, for uh, this is here, this is C15, this is the, uh, the, the, the parameter, the bulk mass parameter for the, for the 15 uh, SU6 multiplet for different generations. So one, two, and three are the generation, um, the generation indexes here. So if you pick these to the Wolfenstein parameters, you get, you get the uh, natural, well, you explain the hierarchies in the CKM. Uh, and something similar happens to, to the PMNS matrix. Uh, but the hierarchies are much less pronounced because now the hierarchies are going to be controlled by a different uh, T parameters, it's minus T six. And my, these T sixes are actually fixed by, by ratios of the, of the masses in the, in the down sector and also by, 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 by the Wolfenstein parameter. So basically you get, uh, you get smaller hierarchies in the, Smaller next to none actually hierarchies in the in the in the PMNS matrix. So the, the main point is that once you fix the fermion masses and uh, the CKM, you reproduce them, you, the PMNS matrix comes without any large hierarchy. We're not explaining it, but we're just uh, we're just uh, just uh, just uh, an, ex uh, an understanding for a hint why it's it's unhierarchical or anarchical. Uh, okay. Also here quickly on uh, the uh, one bound, I, uh, the most important uh, flavor bound I uh, will we compute it. This is like uh, mu to e gamma, which proceeds to, to, to loop to, to these kind of loops. And it turns out that the dominant contribution is come from the leptoquark running in this loop. So this is something new uh, compared to other extra dimensional models where you wouldn't have this light leptoquark. And, uh, Basically, this uh, this bound mu to gamma pushes also your 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 KK scale close to seven TeV, and this is basically it, it coincides with with the scale that I mean with the bounds from coming from the left apart mass, which basically pushes the MKK to a, to a similar to a similar scale. And uh, finally, this is my last slide before my conclusions. Well, deal here. I'm just showing you that. Uh, what I think are some very nice predictions about this uh, the scalar leptoquark S1. Since, uh, since it's, it comes from the same SU5 multiplet as the Higgs, you would naturally expect that uh, the Higgs Yukawas and the leptoquark Yukawas are highly correlated, which is indeed indeed what happens, which you can see as, as can be seen in this, uh, in this uh, Lagrangian. And basically the main point here is that the prediction is that uh, this S1 couples Almost exclusively to top right, uh, top right uh, tau tau right, which is uh, you can see it in this coupling matrix here, and this coupling here would be uh, has some nice features because it would introduce C nine equals minus C ten, you know, which you know solves solves the solves the, the neutral column hierarchy. But unfortunately, it's toward this coupling is two orders of magnitude too 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 small, so. Uh, that's that's a bit of a pity because uh, you cannot explain the the, the anomaly with this leptoquark, but that's just because everything is so constrained and you have this large gauge group and so on and so forth. So that leads me to to my conclusions, which uh, I guess I'll just I'll just flash them since I'm um, since I'm out of time and you can uh, feel free to read them. So thank you very much. All right, thanks, uh, thanks a lot, uh, Andre. Very uh, nice talk. I totally, I felt like I got a nice uh, introduction uh, to this whole uh, gain change unification stuff, which so the, the first half of the talk was the new stuff for me, but it was, it was nice. Um, I guess I guess I'm going to go here with the meeting. But, uh, Javier, did you have a, did you have a question? Yes, hi. Uh, thanks for the, for the talk. Um so you have this plot where you where you show the Higgs and the top mass. And the, you had some you have some some red uh, dots. So what is the difference between red and blue? Uh right. 
So the difference between red and blue is the sign of the, the, this brain mass, right? This brain mass uh, ensures that these uh, exotic quarks give a contribution to the, to, the, to the Higgs potential, right? And basically those two branches correspond to, uh, let's find the problem. This branch corresponds to negative values for that mass. And this branch corresponds to positive uh, values of that of that mass. So this is just to illustrate that really that that parameter is is, is crucial in in reproducing the well experiment. Yeah. So what is the mass of these gauge leptoquarks that that you have? Uh, right. They are so they have they have uh, minus plus boundary condition, and that would be roughly. 2.4 times MKK. So in our in our in our model, that would be like 20, 25, uh, 25 TV. So they're 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 out of reach. They're out of reach at the moment. Uh, but could be an interesting target for future colliders. I think the 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 more interesting, I mean the let's say more immediate prediction, so to speak, would be this uh, left of quark and the singlet, which have like mini scale mass. And the, the gauge, the, the, the other spin one resonance is there a bit higher up. Pretty much like in like you have in QCD, right? You have the pine lights and the rows and etas and whatever, they, they're, they're higher up. So what about the um, unification? So do you get the right uh, phenomenology? Uh, right. So we, we, we're, we're, looking into, we're looking into that, that now, right now. Uh, Basically, with the current setup, to summarize, is that really what, what happens is that you have uh, the differential running is, so not the full running, the differential running is just as in DSM, the standard model, but without the Higgs. Uh, so basically, it stays the same, maybe slightly worse, uh, slightly, slightly worse than in the standard model. And why, why, why does it happen like that? Because uh, you know that you have this ads TFT correspondence, which, uh, which um, postulate, uh, well, conjectures that these warp 5D models I've been talking about, they're dual to, to for these strongly coupled theory. And basically what, uh, what happens here is that whatever is summarizing, whatever is composite, drops out of the running when you get at, at scales higher than the composite scale or than, than MKK in my case. So the Higgs, since it is higher localized, it's a composite, composite. So it, 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 uh, it, it, it drops out. And actually it drops out from the differential running even earlier because now you have a full SU, SU5 multiplet, right? Between the Higgs and this S1 leptoquark. So that, that leads no differential running. And basically that's, uh, that's what happens. And the, the beta functions stay the same as in the standard model with this small amendment that whatever is composite or whatever is higher localized, like the top and the uh, so and the Higgs, they, they, they drop. But the fermions always drop in complete SC5 multiplet. So briefly speak. So the unification scale is uh, something you can, you can uh, tune by, by moving around your parameters. Uh, not yes, but not the parameters I've been talking about. Not the parameters I've been talking about. But, uh, one can so let me go back on this slide. So, right, yeah, one can you know I gave an example of of, of uh, brain terms uh, like the masses, right? But they're not the only uh, type of brain terms. You can also add. Uh, kinet brain localized kinetics to your gauge bosons, to your fermions, to anyone really. So, this adding them on the infrared brain would not help in any way because here it's it's already SU5 symmetric. So, you don't uh, that will not help unification, but you can add them here, right? You can add here gauge, uh, gauge, uh, kinet brain localized kinetic term for the for the standard model gauge boson. So, that. That would that that alters somehow the that, that that would alter the the matching between the 5D and 4D of the gauge coupling. So it's basically it's threshold effect. It's threshold effect, which is you can you can in principle tune. But uh, still, I think this does not 
spoiled completely uh, the predictability of, of unification because one can always use arguments such as, I don't know, at a high scale of uh, like at, at, at the unification scale, you want these, uh, these uh, uh, brain kinetic terms to be zero or loop suppressed or something. So we get that, we get that. I mean, we get using loop suppressed or almost zero uh, gauge kinetics at the, at the high scale, we get approximate, approximate unification. Okay, thank you. Yeah, sure. Uh, I, well, there's a, there's a set of questions. Can you flick to the, your second, your slide just before the conclusions? Slide 35, whatever. The, yeah, that's why I watched it. Because <laughs> you had to brush the eye and look again at the, the structure right of this, this S1. Mm -hmm. uh, so, yeah, okay, so it has. Uh, so, uh, yeah, you're really. Yeah, as, so yeah, as, as this really only couples to the, the third generation top mm. tile uh, pair, right? This, um, um, then these, the, these X and Y gauge bosons, is there anything, um, I guess there's really much about the structure of their, their couplings, right? Because these also, uh -huh. right, essentially like vector vector part type things. Um, there, there is, there is. So they, they, they are, they are minus plus. They're minus plus. So it's this red line which one can barely see here. And uh, the when you count, calculate uh, the couplings, with, for example, light fermions, your light fermions are going to be UV localized. So they're going to be in here. So they're going to overlap mostly with this tail, which is zero. So okay, so the, very uh, suppressed, very suppressed. Also, this this guy has mass in the twenty TB scale, so completely out of reach in the foreseeable future, unfortunately. Okay, yeah, yeah, you have these sort of twenty TB gauge bosons, but they basically don't couple to anything. So you uh, they couple they couple to the third generation. They yeah, couple. Be, yeah, so you you see them, yeah, eventually, I guess through maybe yeah through some some strange top tile. Yeah. Okay, yeah, that was uh, that was a very fair question. Um, all right, well, yeah, thanks, uh, thanks again for the the nice talk. Um, Thank you. Uh, all right. Okay. Bye.